Have you heard that in Cambodia is located a Hindu temple Angkor Wat, the largest religious monument in the world, and that Indonesia was once a Hindu kingdom? Have you heard of the mind-blowing specimens of architecture located in this diverse land? Or about the advanced medicine and texts? We are going to report some amazing facts that will surely leave you baffled. Puri Jagannath Temple, situated in the state of Odisha, which is known for some mysteries that defy scientific explanation. The Sudarshan Chakra. The chakra is actually 20 feet high and weighs a ton. It is fitted on top of the temple. But what is interesting about this chakra is that you can see this chakra from any corner of the Puri city. You can always feel that the chakra is facing towards you. No planes, no birds fly above the temple. The site is a no-fly zone area which has not been declared by any state powers but by some divine power. It has no explanation but still remains a mystery. Mystery of Simhadwaram The Jagannath temple has four doors and Simhadwaram is the main door of entrance to the temple. While you enter through Simhadwaram, you can clearly hear the sound waves but once past the Simhadwaram, you will no longer hear the sound of the waves. The Prasadam mystery which defies the logic of science. Nothing goes wasted in Jagannath temple. The quantity of prasadam which is cooked in the temple remains the same throughout the year. The cooking technique of prasadam which is really unique. Seven pots are used for this and they are stacked on top of each other. Interesting to note here is that the contents of the topmost pot gets cooked first followed by the bottom pots. The temple structure. The structure of the temple is such that it does not cast any shadow at any given time of the day. It still remains to be deciphered whether it is an engineering marvel or a phenomenon that can be attributed only to the refined force. The scenes. In any part of the world, you must have witnessed that during daytime, the wind from sea comes to the land, whereas the wind from the land blows towards the sea at the evening. However, in Puri, the geographical laws are also reversed. Here, just opposite thing happens. The mysterious facts are yet to be unraveled, which makes Puri Jagannath Temple a place to be reckoned with. Although many people consider plastic surgery as a relatively new specialty, the origin of plastic surgery has its roots more than 4,000 years old back in India. Sushruta Samhita is regarded as one of the foundational texts in the field of Ayurveda. It consists of three volumes and 184 chapters. It encompasses not only the teaching regarding plastic surgery, but contains composite teachings of other surgeries and all the allied branches, including midwifery and making it a comprehensive treatise on the entire medical discipline. The Sushruta Samhita's contribution in the field of plastic surgery and other surgeries include reconstruction of the nose known as rhinoplasty, Repair of accidental lip injuries and congenital cleft lip, reconstruction of absent earlobes, 20 varieties of sharp instruments known as sastra and 101 types of blunt instruments yantra and their handling, classified details of the 6 types of dislocations, 12 varieties of fractures and classification of bones and their reaction to injuries. Sushita took surgery in the medieval India to admirable heights and that era was later regarded as the golden age of surgery in ancient India. Kailasa Temple, the world famous temple of Lord Shiva, which is located in the 16th cave of Ellora Caves, Aurangabad in India. Well, this temple is a megalith entirely carved out of a single rock. It was not made by adding stone blocks. This is the only temple in the whole world where carvers started from the top of the rock and excavated downwards. This technique is called as cutout technique. As it's made by cutting a single rock, that too from top to bottom, every single design and measurement was planned very accurately. As once it's cut, then there was no chance to change it by adding any extra stone or piece of rock. This whole temple is made of only one rock. Not even a small piece of rock was joined separately for any design or support. According to historians and archaeologists, it is estimated that approximately 400,000 tons of rock was removed from this site in making of this temple. 
and was constructed in less than 18 years. That means, back in those years, 400,000 tons of heavy rock was scooped out by using ordinary equipment like hammer and cutters, and the temple was ready in just 18 years. Okay, let's assume that 7,000 workers were working like robots for 18 years, 12 hours a day with no breaks at all. That means 60 tons of rock per day and 5 tons of rock per hour was removed. And this was only about scooping out the rock. What about the time taken for designing, planning and carving? How did those workers thousands of years ago manage to carve out this temple using only hammers, chisels and picks? This is impossible even in the 21st century. So guys, do you think that the technology in the 8th century was more advanced than that of the 21st century? The Mangalgiri Temple Sitting on top of a hill in the city of Vijayawada, the fourth incarnation of Lord Vishnu, Narsimha's main offering is a mix of jaggery, dry ginger and lime, traditionally called panakam. There is no idol here. Instead, the prayers and panakam are offered to a 15 cm wide spit. The panakam is poured into the deity's mouth from a conch. It is believed that he accepts only half of what is offered to him. Priests have mentioned hearing sounds of gulping after they offer the panakam to the deity. Only when there isn't any audible sound is the Lord said to be satisfied with the offering. It is after this that the panakam is distributed amongst the devotees. This miraculous act rekindles faith and spiritualism amongst the people who come to the temple. The Musical Pillars of Hampi Hampi is a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Karnataka and was the capital of the Vijayanagara Empire in the 14th century. It is famous for its beautiful monuments and temples, a masterpiece of Indian architecture. The Vithala Temple dates back to the early 16th century and is the most artistically sophisticated Hindu temple in Hampi. The temple is famous for the stone chariot and the musical pillars. Yes, you heard it right, musical pillars of granite. Before independence, the British were also amazed by this and cut open one of the pillars to check what was inside, but found only solid granite. The 56 pillars in the temple are individually tuned to the seven notes of the Indian music scale Saregama. Recent scientific analysis state the rocks may be comprised of an advanced geopolymer blend of granite with silicate particles and metal alloys. But what's surprising is that the first basic geopolymers were invented in the Soviet Union in the 1950s. Historians believe that people during those times had no such technology. What could be the explanation behind this? Did extraterrestrials instruct the sculptors or did they have advanced technology like we do? The Ramappa temple located in Telangana is at least 800 years old. Surprisingly, this temple was named after the craftsman Ramappa. The bricks of this temple can float on water. Because of this floating rock building technology, this temple was recently nominated to the UNESCO World Heritage Site. So, how did they create this kind of technology in the ancient days? Guys, give a thought to it. The Sri Padmanavat Swami Temple of Tiruvanthapuram in South India is a fine example of exquisite architecture that blends Dravidian and traditional Kerala styles. This temple consists of a treasure that has been accumulated by the Tranvancore royal family. The treasure is kept in six secret vaults from A to F. The chamber B is cursed and it is said that anyone who opens this chamber will meet disastrous results. A three and a half feet tall statue of Mahavishnu of pure gold and expensive diamonds studded on it was found here. Also many priceless gems and jewelry was found here. The temple is the richest in the world. So guys, what do you think would really happen if the Vault B was opened? Nidivan Temple 
Located in Vrindavan, Uttar Pradesh, the Nilavan Temple is surrounded by unusually shaped trees with hollow trunks and roots with lively green leaves. The roots of said trees grow upward and the branches droop downward. These trees are believed to be Krishna's gopis who perform the Ras Leela with the Lord and Radha themselves. Before the temple is closed for the night, the devotees and the priests arrange saris, bangles and sweets for the arrival of the Lord and his gopis. The villagers have even mentioned hearing the sound of a gunguru and Krishna's flute. People who have approached the temple at this time are believed to have gone deaf, lost their minds or even died. When the temple opens up in the morning, the things arranged the previous night are found to be in a mess as if they have been used by someone. For those who don't believe in the Lord, what other reason could you possibly come up with? Natya Kovil, the growing Garuda. Being one of the 108 Divya Desam, this temple honors the woman deity Natya first and then Srinivasa, the main deity, joins the procession. The mystery unfolds only when Kal Garuda, the stone eagle structure, is taken out during the procession. Initially, only four men are required to carry the stone Garuda out of the Sanctum Sanctorum and the number multiplies to 8, 16 to totally 128 men. The weight of the stone Garuda keeps increasing from the moment it is taken out of its holy shrine. Even droplets of sweat are seen on his nose. Interestingly, when he returns to the temple after the procession, the stone Garuda would decrease its weight in reverse order. Dwarka, the kingdom of Lord Krishna. Marine scientists found remains of an underwater city in the Gulf of Cambay off the western coast, nearly 120 feet underwater, and said that it could be over 9,000 years old. Marine explorations of Dwarka have dropped at light a large variety of stone structures. They are curved, rectangular, and square in form. Besides these, an oversized variety of sorts of stone anchors have also been discovered. Dwarka was one in all the foremost busy port centers throughout the past on the western coast of India. Mainstream scientists keep still on that ancient culture or civilization goes back 2000 years and equivalent the ruins below the Gulf of Cambay written a minimum of 9000 years. This means that the town should have existed before the flooding. The explorations conducted unsealed sandstone walls a grid of street and a few proof of ocean port. Lord Avtar counter-attacked and Pink slipped his weapons on the ship. They gave the impression of arrows, however, they rode the sort of thunder and shone like rays of sun when set free. The Ram Setu, also known as Adam's Bridge, is a 30-mile long chain of limestone shoals connecting Dhanushkodi, India to Talaimanar, Sri Lanka. What's fascinating is that the rocks lie in an area mentioned in the Hindu epic of Ramayana where Rama places a bridge with the help of the Varnasena to reach Lanka. These rocks lie on what oceanographers call a sandbar, where sand accumulates between two land masses in a shallow region of water. The sandbar may be natural, but what's on top is not. Scientists have found that the rocks on top of the sand are 7000 years old well, the sand is just 4,000 years old. What does this indicate? This suggests that the structure may not be natural, but man-made. What do you think? Machining in ancient times. What do you notice in this rock? Such perfect concentric circles without any deviation or chipping of the rock can only be done with machines. And the rectangular slot in the center proves that this rock was machined using lathe technology. A step back shows us two pillars with holes on them perfectly aligned to drive a shaft through it. Nearby, we can see a rectangular slab with a hole in the center. When measured, we find that the length of the rectangular slab matches with the distance between the two pillars. So this means that the rectangular slab fits exactly between the two pillars. If a metal tool is placed on this shaft, it looks like a modern day vertical lathe. We know that such concentric circles can be made with a vertical lathe through the process of facing. Let's go to another temple where we can say that there was machining in ancient times. Notice this pillar from the Hoysaleshwara temple in Halebidu, Karnataka. Such perfect grooves can be made only with a lathe machine through the process of turning and the circular marks on this pillar prove it. 
Let's look at this monolithic deity from the same temple. Look at his crown. These are small skulls, one inch wide, and they are hollow from inside, such that you can pass a twig from ear to ear or mouth to ear, and the other way around. We know for a fact that making a one inch stone hollow from inside is impossible with primitive tools like chisels and hammers. Also, if you shine a flashlight between his head and crown, the light shines through, proving that there is a gap between the head and the crown. When you try to pass a 3 mm wide twig through it, it doesn't go through. So this means that the gap is less than 3 mm. Carving such a figure from a single rock with such perfection and details can only be done by machines. Another example that shows us that machining existed in those times are this monolithic bowl still remains highly reflective due to high levels of polishing even after 900 years of corrosion and damage. And such polishing can only be done with machines and tools like the rotary burr we use today. The presented ancient Indian facts are just a tip of the iceberg. Imagine, what if the complete iceberg is unraveled? Thank you for watching.